Hello cadets, welcome back. I'm currently at Potato Jet's man cave. Go check out his channel when you have a chance. Listen, blockchains suck at scalability. Now they can only do two of the following three things. They can do security, scalability, or decentralization. Now Ethereum is both decentralized and quite secure, but it isn't scalable yet. As you can see from this graph from Etherscan, the size of the Ethereum chain is rapidly increasing to over 118 gigabytes in the last week. The more nodes that join the blockchain, the more computers that have to solve the equations, the slower the transaction times. Sean Dexter, a writer for Mango Research, compared the scalability problem to a homework assignment that needs to be checked by every professor in a school. In order to make sure that the homework assignment or transaction in Ethereum's case is correct, it first needs to be checked by every single professor in the school or every node in the blockchain. This is good because you know for sure that the assignment or transaction is correct after all those professors signed off on it. But how long will it take you to get your assignment back or to verify a transaction? A really long time. That's the problem Ethereum faces. As Sean Dexter says, Sure, we can reduce the number of professors until we are satisfied with the speed, but as the assignment backlog increases, we will need to further decrease the number of professors. This will eventually lead us to rely on a few trusted group of professors, a centralized group. So the more transactions, the slower the blockchain, unless we rely on a few trusted nodes to verify the transactions. But that goes against one of the greatest benefits of blockchain technology, which is decentralization. So how do we move forward given this trilemma? Well, maybe sharding might just be the try answer. <laughs> All right, let's get to it. My name is Gio and welcome to Cryptonauts. Currently, Ethereum approves only about 15 transactions per second. The process of finding consensus among nodes happens in a linear manner, one at a time. So let's take for example, we have three nodes and they all need to come to a consensus. First, node A computes all the data and verifies its accuracy. Then once A is done, node B computes all that same data and verifies it. Then once B is done, C will do the same. If a fourth node is added, it will continue where C left off, increasing the overall consensus time. But what if the data needed verifying? Could it be broken down into smaller pieces? So what if instead of giving the history, the English, and the physics professor the whole assignment to grade, what if each got their own piece? So history to history, English to English, and physics to physics. What if they all got the assignment corresponding to each at the same time? The way sharding works is that certain nodes would only have to process transactions for certain shards. This would increase the overall throughput and allow for scalability. Each shard would have its own piece of state and transaction history, and each transaction would change the overall state of the shard it belongs to as well as generate a receipt, which is stored in a distributed shared memory, which can be seen by other shards but not change. To go back to our professor assignment analogy, the French teacher can see the grade for the history piece of the exam, but cannot change it. Now sharding does not necessarily disprove the trilemma as it does create some concern over a 1% attack. You may have heard of something called a 51% attack. If the attacker has 51% of the total hash power of the network, they then have the power to double spend, claim all rewards, etc. But if the network is split into 100 shards, then each of those shards has 1% of the hash power. In a 100 shard system, it takes only 1% of network hash rate to dominate the shard. Okay, I know that was kind of complicated to understand. So let's think of it another way. Let's say you have a castle that's being attacked by an army, but you have a massive gate, a huge gate. It'll take 51 guys to pry open this huge gate. So that's kind of like a 51% attack. But you have another castle that has 100 smaller gates, little doors basically. And it only takes one guy with a crowbar to open it. So that's kind of like sharding and a 1% attack. So basically it's easier for a hacker to take over one shard versus a whole network. The discussed solution is to have randomized validators on each shard. 
If there's a set of validators, they will be randomly assigned a shard to verify. If a malicious validator can't know the shard in advance, then they can't take advantage of the 100 shard system. To explain more about validating and becoming a validator, we have resident blockchain researcher Lily in New York. Thanks, Gio. Okay, so how do you actually become a validator? Well, you just need a measly 32 ETH and voila, you're a validator on the new sharding system. Okay, now what? How does validating actually work? Well, the most important thing to know is receipts. Warning, the following is a really simplified explanation of sharding. So let's begin with a shipping container, which represents a block on the main chain. This container has 10 boxes, and each box has 100 transactions. With the old way of validating transactions, 100 miners would have to verify all 1,000 transactions by playing a digital game of bingo. The first one to get to bingo wins. So all of that time and energy was wasted for the 99 other miners. Now we have a validator that invests 35 ETH into a smart contract. That ETH is locked up or burned, and the validator can now begin validating. He is given a box with 100 transactions. This box is called shard one. Another validator has box shard 10. In a transaction example, Jim sends 10 ETH to David. That creates two receipts, one for sending that goes to shard one and one for receiving that goes to shard 10. Both validators approve the receipt at the same time and Jim's transaction gets approved. David gets 10 ETH right away. As you can see, sharding is a much more efficient system than mining. Why would you want to become a validator just to burn 32 ETH? Well, the goal is to win a validator fee and hopefully make your money back and then some. Back to you, Gio. Thanks, Lily. Eventually, Ethereum may become a system built from shards of shards, also known as super quadratic sharding scheme but we're still plenty far away from that. But the potential for scalability is monumental as well as other added benefits such as super tiny transaction fees and Ethereum acting as a general purpose infrastructure for all kinds of new applications. One current problem that sharding faces is that it would be difficult to make sure that the nodes are processing transactions at the same time. A method or mechanism will need to be put into place to decide which node processes which shard. But developers are constantly working to remedy the drawbacks so that Ethereum can hopefully scale to mainstream adoption. Check out our upcoming video on Casper and what it means for the future of Ethereum scalability because the future is bright, my friends. Please comment, like, and subscribe if you haven't already. We'd love to hear your feedback. As always, hodl. Secure your crypto and may Satoshi and Vitalik be with you always.